Hey there, welcome back to the Biblical Counseling Podcast. Jeff Christensen here, and I'm in studio in Southern California, Newport Beach, and so I'm going to go ahead and open with prayer today. Lord, we give you thanks, and in counseling God's way, I thank you for each of the lives that are here in the Biblical Counseling Academy each of the lives that are listening to this podcast and that you would bless and touch and teach and mold and shape and speak to all of us. Lord, we need to hear from you and we set aside our time for your work in our lives in this podcast episode that your will, your honor, and your glory will be manifest in our lives. We ask that you make just as you promised, you will build your people, you will edify us, you will build your church, and you'll use times like this in our lives, times where we're in the Word and we're listening to podcasts and we're looking to the Scriptures. Thank you for the Scripture. Thank you for the Bible. We treasure your Word. What a great gift from you. Thank you for not leaving us alone to figure out life. And uh, we treasure um, the presence and work of your Holy Spirit in our lives. Thank you for receiving us, guiding us into all truth by your Holy Spirit, taking the things that are of Jesus Christ and making them ours. And would you enlighten us, O Lord, convict us even, encourage us, comfort us, sort things out for us, for me, for this listening audience, for my students, for my loved ones, for my family, sort things out. And Lord, equip us to do things that would please you, that would be pleasing in your sight. And so we just open up this podcast, this episode. Uh, We ask for a mighty outpouring of your Holy Spirit in these troubling times we're living in, these difficult days. Uh, So throughout our time together in this episode, but also in our next episode and in the Biblical Counseling Podcast as we step up more and more activity, Uh, we ask that as you would pour out grace upon grace upon grace and your word goes forth, we would receive it, great grace upon us, and that we would proclaim the things of Jesus Christ, asking these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So welcome back to the Biblical Counseling Podcast. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're listening. And I wanted to talk about a couple different things that I think are important for us to hear and be reminded of. Number one, why do we listen to biblical counseling podcasts? Well, part of it is, number one, and if you're enrolled in the Biblical Counseling Academy, I'm glad you're with us. Number one, we want counseling for ourselves. Well, we want to let God counsel us His way. Every one of us, every believer in Christ needs the counsel of God regularly. Don't buy into the false thinking, the humanistic, man-centered, cultural, pop psych- psychology thinking that counseling is just for the weirdos or the psychotic or the seriously troubled. And it's not for me or it's not for us that are only half weird, so to speak. Don't buy that. We all need counsel regularly. Counsel is good to receive, especially from the Lord. And you know, I found the biggest thing that God does as we study this subject of counseling God's way, of biblical counseling, of soul care, is that He counsels me. He counsels you. He counsels us. There's nothing greater than that, is there? Think about it. You're going to receive counsel from God if you're expecting it. And that's why I reiterate this prayer or this purpose that when you listen to the podcast, expect to hear from God. And so right away, you've got a value. You've, you've got to, if, if we ended the podcast right now, you would be seeking and searching and waiting and expecting God to counsel you every time you open His Word, every time you show up to church and hear a sermon. That's one of the things I love about Bible exposition. When you teach book by book, verse by verse, chapter by chapter, or if you're just a, a Bible expositor in whatever way you bring the Word to the people, or if you listen to the Word being taught, 
in an expository, biblical, sound manner, you are receiving God's counsel. So you want to be listening and expecting and praying and uh, looking for God to counsel you. Number two, the second thing that you'll find in the Biblical Counseling Academy, and by the way, biblicalcounselingacademy.com, we're going to launch Spring 2 Cohort. So if you know anybody that you're uh, friends with that you want to be inside, they're going to have to start at the beginning and that's okay. They get 12 months just like you do to finish towards certification. So I wanted to let you know we're going to open up a new uh, group to come on the inside. But it's for people that need to hear from the Lord. Secondly, the purpose of the Biblical Counseling Academy and this podcast is to allow God to equip us a bit to give counsel His way. And I think that's why we signed up. That's why we're listening. That's why we're being certified. We want to learn to give God's counsel God's way. We want to be equipped. We feel that we don't have everything we need, and we want the certification. We want the stamp of approval. We want to study to show ourselves approved unto God, not unto man, to, you know, to rightly divide the word of truth. And that's what we're here for. That's what I look for, is I want to be equipped to be a better instrument of God's counsel, to give counsel His way. So, the second purpose of this podcast, of the Biblical Counseling Academy, of the certification courses that we teach, is to learn to give godly counsel. And that we're called, all of us, and that's the thing that a lot of people don't understand. Well, they do after I explain it or after they hear it explained or after they read it in the Word, is that every Christian is called upon to give God's counsel at least periodically, if not regularly. And again, humanistic thinking of the world is that counseling is just for the human experts. Well, there's one expert. His name is God. And we're not called in the kingdom of God uh, to lean upon the human experts, we're called to lean upon God. And every Christian is called to be involved in giving and receiving counsel. So number one, we receive counsel from the Lord. Number two, we give the Lord's counsel as his instrument. And so we need it regularly. And then we need to ask the Lord to use us instrumentally to share his counsel with others. And God wants to use us. And, you know, we want to be equipped to do it His way. And I think that's important to know. You know, you pick up the phone, you get a phone call, you get an email, you get a text message, and you're right away, a lot of times, if you read that text message through the lens of being a soul care counselor or a a minister of the Word of God, you'll think, how can I glorify God in answering this text message, this email, this, uh, this, you know, social media messaging, you know, whether you're on Instagram or Twitter, LinkedIn or Facebook or wherever you find yourself, if you're on TikTok or whatever the app is, you're going to have a chance to give people God's advice or God's, you know, more than advice, his, his truth from his word. So the first two general purposes of the Biblical Counseling Academy and this podcast, the Biblical Counseling Podcast, the reason I do what I do, whether it's on social media or email or text messaging or on this podcast or in the the video content or in our Zoom calls, is to let God counsel us a bit, number one. Number two, allow God to equip us to give godly counsel. But number three, number three, warnings, warnings. We'll we'll have a minor theme of warning concerning counseling man's way. And I mean, that's continual. It's like we're bombarded and sometimes we notice it. Sometimes we don't. And we want to develop discernment. The world has its way to counsel and God has his way. And, you know, we want to be doing God's work His way. The amazing thing 
is that it's inside the church. If you, if you ever walked with me through a bookstore, I would point out that's error and that's, it's very rare to find a bookstore that does not have compromised books in there on self-help, pop psychology, counseling that is humanistic mixed with the Bible. It's got a nice Bible cover on it, but the contents are humanistic, psychotherapy, and psychology mixed with a little bit of Bible. You know, you baptize it in Christian language and you add a verse here and add a verse there, but the the core of the thinking of that author and of that book, and I'm not against authors, I'm against their message. I separate the two. I'm not, I'm not shaming anybody or putting anybody down, but if their message comes against the Word of God, the Bible teaches in Jude, we're to contend earnestly for the faith that was once for all delivered to the saints. The faith, the definite article, the in front of faith, the faith is the objective content of the Word of God that we put our faith in, that we live by faith in God. So there's uh, there's different ways to describe and um, you know talk about or define faith. And the faith, when there's a definite article, speaks of the Word of God. What we what we uh, what our action is, where we live. So we'll talk about that a little bit more another time. But the radical change in the counseling ministry in the church for you know after 2000 years all of a sudden freud shows up and bf skinner shows up and you know uh you know maslow shows up and carl rogers shows up and carl jung shows up and a lot of brilliant people show up and they study how to figure out mankind and where humankind came from and where where we're going and how to get there without god and then we're supposed to blend that with the bible no no thank you we're not going to do it and i run into this issue all over the place whether i'm you know i've been in i've taught biblical counseling in eastern europe and hungary i've taught it in uh Vladimir outside of Moscow and Jerusalem and other parts of the world physically when I traveled before the pandemic. I don't know how much travel I'm going to do anymore. I've had trips planned and it's too bad I can't go. But right now I'm doing this over Zoom and over the internet. And wherever you go, all over the place, you know, whether you're in, uh, uh, the Philippines in the wild west like Mindanao Island or where have you and uh, the down under in Australia New Zealand and uh, in South America or Mexico or somewhere uh, in Latino countries you know the United States has been the number one uh, missionary sending country for for the last so many years and what our missionaries have been bringing is introducing humanistic psychological theory to Africa and places like that. It's crazy. And so I'm going to sound that alarm. I'm going to point it out. I'm going to point out authors and I'm going to point out their books. And again, remember, I, I'm not against people. I love people. I love their their heart and and I don't know their motives or anything like that, but I know their message because I read their books. And I compare their book to scripture, and it, it, it's 180 degree opposite. It contradicts scripture. It's a different worldview. So I'm not, I'm saying this author typically writes in this philosophy, and I reject it. And I'll name pe- names, and I'm going to do that. So that's how we're going to approach um, the Biblical Counseling Academy. Number one, we're going to get counseled. Number two, we're going to get equipped. That's how the Word of God approaches every issue, really. It's the truth we need to walk in and then equips us to share it with others, whether in edification or in evangelism. But you go from Genesis to Revelation, there's always a a minor theme of warning. Look out for this. There's prophets. There's, you know, there's danger, you know, in in the epistles about 
uh, about church error and things like that. You know, Jesus said, blessed are the poor in spirit, for those is the kingdom of heaven. Well, that's great truth, and we need to hear that, and it touches me and it touches others in that truth. But right after that, in Matthew chapter 16, he said, beware of the leaven of the Sadducees and the Pharisees, the big, giant, major religious leadership groups in the nation, the chosen nation of Israel, and in their te teaching, there's leaven in it, a, a corrupting influence. And Jesus didn't say, here's the truth, now watch out, everything you hear isn't truth. He, he did this warning, here's the truth, and those two groups out there, the major authority of religion, the biggest following, the popular guys, watch out for them, they've got leaven in their teaching that corrupts. So, uh, welcome to the Biblical Counseling Academy and this podcast. We'll be talking about those things, you know, and so be willing to take notice of the corruption along the way. And uh, we want to be careful, though. We're, I'm not trying to be some kind of self-righteous know-it-all and everybody else knows nothing. It's not that at all. God knows everything. And man needs to hear and learn no matter what God has taught him. And I mean, you know, we want to be true to the Word of God. And how does the Lord deal with truth? And how does He touch lives? And how does He, though, also bring warning? And that's what we're going to see in the Word of God. And so I think it's great to, that you're with us uh, on this. And uh, we're going to continue... Uh, doing some of these things, uh, you know, as we go through. So, I like equipping people for biblical counseling. And, you know, I want to see, I have a heart for pastors. And I know what a lot of pastors face and go through. Because I am a senior pastor. I, I don't always know what pastors in certain geographic areas go through or with certain size congregations or certain, you know, denominations and so forth. But I kind of have an idea what a leader face, what pastors face, the impossibilities. It's phenomenal. There's joys, there's blessings beyond measure, absolutely. But the spiritual warfare, the perplexities, the day-to-day -day surprises that can turn from a tranquil walk to an absolute hurricane in 15 minutes or less. I mean, my heart goes out to senior leaders and pastors and ministers. And I'm just knowing that God's going to use me in the years ahead to encourage and help pastors and those in ministry or those preparing for minister ministry or those who want to minister more. And I, I really think that that's what God's going to use me for, uh, use the Biblical Counseling Academy for, and the people that I'm going to be bringing on the team. I've got a whole host of people standing by. We just need to get the, the cameras out and the lights out, the microphones out, and start doing some recording, you know, and I think there's a lot of people out there that, that want to hear God's counsel, want to be equipped for counseling, and want to be warned. And they want to let the Word of God speak. And we will do this together, and I think it's going to be wonderful. So the first area that we've talked about, and I'm going to kind of just go here as by way of reminder... And let me see where we're at time. We're at about 19 minutes. What counseling is. And this is where we've, we've begun, and I'm kind of camping here for a few, few weeks, is that the study of counseling, or how do we counsel God's way, by God's definition, you know, let, let's ask God to tell us what counseling is about. And the Lord is the counselor. And we've talked about that, that the difference is, you know, the Lord himself is the counselor in the Old Testament and the New Testament. And when he's allowed to counsel, he's going to flavor everything with discipleship. 
and that leads unto sanctification, growing in grace. And there's going to be, like we said, warnings, whether you go in the Old or the New Testament. And we've talked about it in, in the kingdom of humanity. Man counsels man. Women counsels women. A, a woman will go to, to university, get her degree in psychotherapy or psychology or marriage and family therapy or she'll become a, a cognitive behavioral therapist or Rogerian model or or the the variety that's out there. There's so many different flavors of counseling today. And they'll specialize in it. And they'll become an expert on people. But they're doing that with God kind of pushed to the side or not in the very center, but typically it's humanistic, philosophical theories being central, and that's where the bulk of their study is. I suggest you go study the Bible. You learn Bible exposition. You learn books of the Bible. You learn verse by verse through Genesis, key books, Genesis, uh, Isaiah, the Psalms, the Proverbs, uh, Daniel, Revelation for eschatology. You learn Matthew in, in the Gospel of John. You learn Romans, especially for anthropology. Uh, you learn the pastoral epistles. You learn uh, Hebrews. You go through major important books of the Bible. And when you do that, I believe a person is becomes an expert more than somebody that goes off to university to get licensed as a psychotherapist. And so that's how, the that's what's crept into the church. We send our people off to university to get these degrees in psychotherapy and not in biblical theology. And even, even the other danger is a lot of times we... Um, we don't study the Bible chapter by chapter, book by book. We study about the Bible and topics rather than studying expositionally through the Scripture. If you know the Bible, you're competent to counsel. And that's the radical difference. In the kingdom of God, God is the expert and He counsels humankind. He counsels men and women, you know, boys and girls, he counsels people. And so that's everything we're going to look at. It's going to be related to that in this podcast and in the Biblical Counseling Academy. And so we, we're going to warn what's being substituted for the Word of God. And the, we're going to talk about the Holy Spirit. I believe in the continuation of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Uh, the Word of Wisdom, the Word of Knowledge. Uh, gifts of healings. I believe that the Holy Spirit has a subsequent work after salvation for a, a baptism of the Holy Spirit. We'll talk about that is very controversial in the biblical counseling movement. Maybe you're listening and say, well, I don't believe in that. Well, that's okay. You know, you can hear me out on the subject and maybe take away what you do believe, what you do understand about the Holy Spirit. But I want to be careful that we're not all about God the, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Bible, which is typically what you see in a lot of the biblical counseling movement, is the Bible, uh, that physical copy of the Bible, has kind of replaced the Holy Spirit, where you know we need, to, we need God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit as He leads us into all truth, which is the Word of God. So, what is counseling from God's perspective? It's about His truth and the Lord being the counselor and illuminating it by His Holy Spirit. We're going to wrap it up here. And by way of reminder, what are the three purposes? When you study the Biblical Counseling Podcast or you're in the academy, number one, hear from God and be counseled. Number two, be equipped to counsel others and be an instrument of God's counsel. Number three, be warned of humanistic intrusion into the church, into the counseling discipleship arena. 
Number four, be committed to the work and dynamic of the Holy Spirit and allow God to be who he says he is, the counselor, the wonderful counselor. Hope this helps. Love you guys. Talk to you next time. Bye for now.